Hey everybody, how's it going? I had a comment on one of my videos recently from Tweed532. He asks, are you becoming the Lewis Rossman of the airways? And in my recent AMA video, I got a question from a Mr. Clinton who said, do you watch Lewis Rossman? My answer is, who the hell is Lewis Rossman? <laughs> Fly. G'day and welcome back to the channel. This is the first of a series of videos in which I'll be trying to answer some of the questions that you guys asked me in the Ask Me Anything video. I had th over 320 responses to that video in the comedy section, so I figured I'd better come up with some answers. And uh, the, probably the most important question, the one that many people have asked and I think everyone wants to know the answer to, is what happened to the ADSB alarm? Well, here it is. Here it is. Yes, it is still here. It's still alive. It is still going to be an open source project. Um, some of the things I've done recently, the code for this was originally written in a language called Python, which is really easy to knock stuff up quickly. You know, um, it's not a very efficient language because it's not fully compiled, which means it's got a bit of overhead when you're actually running it. So the, it did stress out the old Raspberry Pi a little bit, which meant the Raspberry Pi drew a bit more current than it needed to. And I'm not a great fan of Python. It's not a strongly typed language. It's easy to make mistakes. There are still a few bugs popping up, which in an interpreted language, it's, it's sometimes the bugs don't pop up until that line of code gets run. Whereas in a compiled language, the, the, at least the syntactical errors are caught uh, pretty much by, straight away by the compiler. But anyway, aside from all the geeky speak, um, I've rewritten the code in C, which means it runs faster, the Raspberry Pi runs cooler, the batteries last longer, all the good things that you expect um, from good, a good system. So uh, I've got that ready to test, but, but, here in New Zealand, we're in a level four lockdown. That means there are no planes in the sky. There's no ADS-B transmissions for this damn thing to pick up. So I can't actually test the code yet. They'll have to wait until we get aircraft back in the air and then I can run my usual set of tests through it, make sure it's actually working because um, there's a lot of code to test. And it's no good me putting this thing out there and everyone um, tries it and it doesn't work properly. So yeah, and also I've been doing some other stuff, uh, making an app for your phone. No, this isn't your phone, it's my phone. But making an app for your phone, because when you look at the, at the ADS-B alarm, there's no keyboard. There's, there's the, it, it's a, it's a read-only device, it only tells you stuff, it doesn't, you can't change anything. Um, there's no keyboard, no, no buttons, nothing like that. So you need a phone, an app on your phone, so that you can tell it where it is, where you are, and the, the radius, the alarm radius you want to set, the altitude, minimum altitude you want to set, all those things that control how the alarm is triggered need to be set, and they may vary from place to place. Well, obviously if you move around, you need to have a se separate, you need to tell it where you are so it knows where to look. Um, so the app on your phone will do that. It'll give you a little thing you can press the thing say I'm here and then it will set the radius up around that you can change the radius you can change the altitude all those things that are quite useful to do so this becomes the interface to your ADS-B alarm and that goes even further because I'm currently just working on the, the software that will enable the ADS-B alarm instead of making a little buzzer go on the alarm itself which requires a separate circuit board um, it will just simply get your phone to sound an alarm when a plane comes in so if a plane comes into the alert area your phone will, will the haptic buzzer will go and it'll play a little alarm or whatever so that you know. So, and that means multiple people can use one alarm. If you're flying at a club on a flight line, then everyone can have their phone in their pocket. And if an aircraft comes into the area, your phone will vibrate and it'll make a noise. And everyone on the flight line will know, hey, time to land, there's an airplane coming or whatever. So these are advances, and at the moment, because I can't actually test anything, I might as well put some time into adding a few extra features. Not as if I'm just gonna sit here and twiddle my damn thumbs. So that's what's happening now. Our, I don't expect to see any aircraft in the air around here for at least another two weeks because of the lockdown. That's what they're expecting. They're telling us it could be another two weeks at least for a level four in, in Auckland and level three elsewhere. Um, so, and I don't think they fly in level three either. So ah, what do we do? Anyway, that's it. That's, that's the status of the ADS-B alarm. Now that was obviously the, the key question. It will be launched. Uh, there will be an open source page where you can download the software, you can get the firmware. Uh, another change I made actually, which is important, and this is why I haven't released all the hardware specs yet, because it has been in a state of flux. Now these screens I mentioned, um, they're crap. You can't see them in the sunlight. And uh, I got a whole lot of them as a cheapo because they were end of line. And they did the job for testing and first trials of the system. But I have since changed the firmware so we can use a different screen, which is any composite video screen. That's any FPV screen. You can plug your goggles in there. If you've got an old television set, you could plug that in and, and have it on the big screen if you wanted to, as long as it's got composite video input. So um, 
that's one of the reasons I didn't release the hardware specs because they weren't finalized but pretty shortly I will tell you what you need to order to build one of these and you can go out and while I'm sorting out the software at least you can get the hardware and have a play around yourself I'll probably release the code before it's ready so you can still have a play around and then I'll do a, a, a provisional first release and then everyone can get stuck in they can laugh and mock me mercilessly for my crappy programming skills and they can improve it and make it better and make it do the things that I wanted it to do but I just couldn't be asked doing so there you go that's the ADS B alarm in a nutshell for you that question has been answered and I'll be doing you know maybe a video a day addressing those questions starting at the top with the most important ones and then working our way down to the bottom so hopefully if you've asked me a question in the comments on that video you'll get an answer eventually uh, the other thing I want to ask in this video is can you do me a favor please I've done two videos on the Google Wing drone delivery service and especially the second one I'd like that to be seen by as many people as possible people that are in the hobby and people that are not in the hobby it's a very important video because it really does betray the deception that Google is using out there and the way they're trying to influence governments to their own ends and being disingenuous claiming it's all about drone delivery but as we see in that submission they made it's all about getting the keys to the sky we need to stop that we need to nip that in the bud before it gets too too far along the path of no return so please spread that a link to that video in your social media and, and you know what what is it what do you people use these days um bebop is it or is it um i don't know that you know those things bookface um i don't know twatter something like that anyway um instafuzz so all those things go on your all your, your things and Put a link to that don't spam but I mean let people know that video is there because everyone needs to see it everyone needs to know this now because it's too late once it's happened it's way too late we saw that with with registration in fact remember when when the FAA first mooted or oh, registration you guys are gonna have to register your models and your drones and, and I stood up and screamed as loud as I could do not register it'll only encourage them well look where we are now well down the road to network remote ID and people have just sat back and taken whatever's been thrown at them and it's not a good way to handle things remember you're in a democratic nation well most of you watching this video are in a democratic nation the people making these rules and regulations and effectively barring you from the skies are supposed to be working for you they're not supposed to be just telling you what to do they're supposed to be doing your bidding you're paying their wages they should be working for you and everybody else not just for google or a few influential um, people that have got some power and some money to throw up politicians no 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 no. we have to stop this and knowledge is the key the more people know about the real agenda the less easy it is for people like Google to push those agendas through so do your job do your job get out there and help me educate everybody everybody that's anybody it's really important that we do this now finally um, I'm, as I've said many times I'm here to promote and protect the hobby I'm doing my best I'm doing my best and the lockdown has given me more time to do some more uh, research and come up with some ideas and I'm going to be doing a series of videos where I explain how the strategies the tactics we can use to push back against this regulatory overreach the ways we can reclaim some of our freedoms that have been taken from us already and it's a very difficult thing to do because I don't want to you know I've been a strong advocate of civil disobedience but the problem with civil disobedience is it's another name for breaking the rules and if you break the rules well they just fine you they can even lock you up if you're not careful and I don't want anybody watching these videos to risk a fine or being locked up or being in any other way censured because they broke the rules we need to be a bit smarter than that we need to come back with strategies that enable us to get our message across without risking our wallets or our freedom so I've got a few ideas in the back of my mind I'm going to spend a few days getting those together and so in a week or two you will see a video from me laying out our strategy our plan for the future if you want to come on that ride with me and I really hope you do because if you don't the hobby is lost I think we've seen that it, you know for evil to triumph requires only that good men do nothing are you going to do nothing I'm not going to do nothing I'm going to fight like hell to protect this hobby and make sure that my grandchildren and my grandchildren's grandchildren still have the right to enjoy the most fantastic hobby in my opinion in the world so come on join me in the fight you won't risk your lives or your wallets but we need to take action there you go and I'd also like to have a big thanks to my patreon supporter <laughs> let me share some information with you my YouTube earnings have been dropping they've been going down I think everybody's YouTube's earnings have been in decline of late and the payout I got this month for the previous month crossed a threshold a very important threshold I got less or the, my YouTube earnings were not enough to pay my rent 
And that's basically it. I did not earn enough money from YouTube to even pay my rent. That's how bad it has got. So it is only thanks to my Patreon supporters that I'm able to continue this fight and continue promoting the hobby for the benefit, hopefully, of future generations. And so every single one of you, no matter how much you're contributing through Patreon, I thank you so much. And everyone else watching the video who's not a Patreon supporter should also be thanking you wholeheartedly because you guys are going to be hopefully responsible for saving this hobby by empowering me to do so by giving me the financial freedom to continue making these videos. Thanks. I thank you 100%. And of course, if you've got a buck to spare in a month, go to my Patreon page, sign up. You'll be loved forever by everyone in the hobby, honestly. And you get warm, fuzzy feelings. They're very important. Everyone needs warm, fuzzy feelings. So there you go, folks. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There'll be more of these uh, uh, ask me anything answer videos coming up in the next couple of days maybe the next couple of weeks probably for a long time 320 responses i may not live that long anyway thanks guys spot you later Overregulation is like a tumor it's killing a hobby it must be terminated now